Today on America's Court with Judge Ross. Clearly, if pitting is bad, and she wasn't expecting pitting, and she's complaining about that, two days later, I would think she would still be within the realm of time that would allow for the damage to be cured. In my courtroom, it's about equity and fairness. You want him to pay 628? Yes, Your Honor. All right, knock my socks off. Justice should be more than just some foreign concept. I actually want you to learn something. The law talks about something may in fact be true, but can they prove it? And that's what's tough. Fair, firm, compassionate. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. Gabriella Durant claims a rainstorm compromised the structural integrity of her new driveway, and she blames her contractor. Ms. Durant is suing Ryan Perryman in the amount of $2,400. Mr. Perryman claims he checked the forecast before going ahead with the work and doesn't believe the rainfall was extensive enough to cause significant damage. All rise. Remain standing and come to order. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Kevin Ross presiding. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. All parties been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Deputy Thomas. Let's talk about this driveway. You're not happy with the services that Mr. Perryman did. You want your $2,400 back. Exactly. Why are you entitled to the full amount? Because the driveway simply does not look good. Um, I really don't even think the driveway is going to last very long. And what is it about the look of the driveway that's unsatisfactory? It has pitting, and it I have some. Pitting? It has pitting, yes, and um, discoloration. And I have some pictures here if I'd you like would to like see to that. see those. I take it the term pitting means that you're seeing some sort of bubbles or holes. Little holes that might be caused by some bubbles mm -hmm. in the concrete. All right, you're familiar with the term pitting? Yes, correct, John. Is that a, a term that's used in your particular line of work? Uh, for driveways, yes. And what does that mean specifically? Uh, little holes. Uh, little holes. Li little holes that have been right. formed by condensation. We're all on the same page. The design and the understanding of the parties was that there were not going to be any holes in the cement. You didn't design it and pour it this way for it to result in pitting, correct? Well, Your Honor, I, I designed and poured it the, the way I explained it to uh, Mr. What Rand. you envision in completion of the job was there going to be pitting in the finished product? No, I did not, uh, no. I did not do right. that, no. No right. one wanted pitting. <clears throat> pitting is not a good thing here. We are all on the same page. Yes. I'm looking at this driveway. Let's take a look at that on the plasma. And you've got it up close that there are these little pits. That is not what you expected to deliver in terms of a completed service for Mr. Rand. Is that fair to say? Correct, Your Honor. All right. How long was it, Ms. Durant, before you started noticing this condition in the driveway? At first, it wasn't as severe as what you're looking at right now. In um, other words, but on day one, the job is complete. Yes. There's day two, three, four, six, ten, fifteen. What day did you start noticing that it was a problem? Two days after it was poured. Two days after it was poured. Did you contact Mr. Perryman to let him know that? Yes, I did. Do you recall? receiving information from Ms. Durant that two days after you had finished pouring, she was starting to see this problem with her concrete driveway. Uh, yes, Your Honor, I did. And what was your response to that, sir? I explained to her that I can, I can come over and resurface the driveway for an additional $1,000. Why would she have to pay an additional $1,000 and she's seeing this surface in two days after you completed the job the first time? For product and uh, labor. Why is she having to pay an additional $1,000 to repair something that she did not have any expectation that she would be seeing? Well, because you can't really prove that, that the condensation, any condensation whatsoever, uh, formed those pits from, okay. from my work. You've been doing this type of work for how long? Uh, 30 years, Your Honor. And what made you decide to go with Mr. Perryman in the first place? Well, Mr. Perryman had done some work for me in the past. What type of work are we talking about? He put an additional room on my house. He added a room to your house? Yes. And did that involve... Uh, drywall and wood and exactly. structural yeah, and everything, and usual. you were pleased. Mm -hmm. And I was pleased with that. And so. that was the only job he had done for you, or had he done other jobs previous to that? No, that was the only job okay. that he did but for me. But you didn't have any problems? No, there wasn't a problem at all. What made you decide to choose him to do the room addition to begin with? Was well, he referred I... to you? Had you seen his work before? What? Um, he had done some work for some neighbors. 
and they recommended him. All right. So I they went had back. a good experience with him. Yes. You hired him to do a room addition. You have a good experience with him. Right. And you say, okay, now I'm going to let you do this driveway. Exactly. Okay. What sort of warranty or guarantee do you give after you've done work? Because here, clearly, if pitting is bad, and she wasn't expecting pitting, and she's complaining about that, two days later, I would think she would still be within the realm of time that would allow for the damage to be cured. Coming up on America's Court. I took a, um, a sample from the concrete that was laid on the driveway and I did a cross analysis of it and put it underneath the microscope and we did indeed find that there were tiny air pockets inside the concrete. And later. How's Granny doing? She had a tough time last night. It's always tough to talk about. It looks like I'll be able to cover the funeral expenses once the time comes. Closed captioning provided by if you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. America's Court is back with the case of Gabriella Durant, who is suing Ryan Perryman for property damage. We have a witness. What's this person here for? Um, this is Brian Norris. Mr. Norris, what brings you to America's Court? Sir, I'm a, uh, what's called a... Um a geotechnical engineer, which is a fancy word for saying a rock doctor, and right. I'm a good friend of uh, the family here. Okay. And what I did um, is I took a concrete petrograph analysis, if I could give this to you. you want to see that? Yes. Petrograph analysis. Mm -hmm. What does a petrograph analysis tell me? So what it's going to tell you is I took a, um, a sample from the concrete that was laid on the driveway, and I did a cross analysis of it and put it underneath the microscope. And we did indeed find that there were tiny air pockets inside the concrete. So basically the whole driveway looks like Swiss cheese. You know basically. how when you make pancakes and you see the bubbles come up mm -hmm. in the front? That's what that looks like to yep, me. Yep, absolutely. And that's the air that is somehow not being smoothed out. It should be a smooth surface. The way it actually, what happens, uh, Your Honor, is if, uh, during the curing period of the concrete, if it gets too wet, it's good to have a uh, damp, but if it gets That's too right, wet. Because normally if you're getting a pool installed mm -hmm. or other aspects of concrete, you need a lot of water. Right. Um, but it, are you saying that... If it gets can... too wet, if there's too much water, what happens, it's, it does what's called pooling on top, and it seeps down into the concrete, and then uh, and it creates spaces. And then when the water evaporates, it leaves these air holes, uh, which leaves the whole entire driveway susceptible to cracking. Uh, it probably won't last through the winter. Now... Are you saying, Ms. Durant, that you believe Mr. Perryman added too much water? No. Uh, what actually happened was that we started off on a very clear day with him working. It was actually the second day that he was there, and he did pour the concrete. And then um, a little while later, I'd say two hours after he left, I noticed it was drizzling, and, and then it, it started raining a little harder. So I called him, and I was worried that maybe there would be too much water. Can anyone check the weather conditions for the week prior? We both did, actually. And, and you did as well, sir? Yes, sir, I did. And what did that? Uh... No, uh, no condensation, no precipitation, and no rainfall for, that day, for those two days, period. The weather report ended up being incorrect. Exactly. And okay. I asked him whether How do you or not... How blame him for that if you yourself checked and confirmed that the weather conditions were well, not... Well, it wasn't so much that I was blaming him for it. I understand these things happen, but, but I asked him... But according to your own witness, Mr. Norris, if it rained and you had that pooling with the additional water, how would he have been able to foresee that? Your Honor, it, if I may interject, yes, um, sir. actually what would have helped the situation um, is if they had covered the driveway that, that night. Um, so... Um, I because then you him. wouldn't have the pooling. Right, you wouldn't have the pooling. Exactly. <clears throat> okay. Well, Your Honor, I mean, and I called him to ask him about the, <clears throat> the rain when it started to find out if maybe I should go get some tarps and put on Do you recall the conversation about her calling you about the rain? Yes, Your Honor. I, and I what did do. you tell her when she expressed the concern? Not to worry about it because, first of all, on the slope that we did uh, for the code, okay, okay. Let's, let's assume what you're saying after that is fine. You said don't worry about it. Everything's going to be the way you expected it. Well, correct, yes. And then it turned out not to be the case. And after that, you're saying I need to have it done all over again, so pay me all of the money back? Yes, because I don't know how far down this damage goes or anything. I got it. You know, here's what it comes down to. And Deputy Thomas will tell you, I am really big on, on what? 
Customer service. Customer service. I'm really big on customer service. I've got somebody that has spent $2,400 on a driveway that we can all agree does not look good. There's either one or two things that's going to happen. Either the plaintiff is going to have to come out of pocket again, or the person who did the work is going to somehow cure the defect. And based on all the evidence and the testimony before this court, the gavel is going to come down in favor of the plaintiff because the plaintiff did not get the benefit of the bargain. What I'm also sensitive to is that should you have to pay her $2,400? No. I think what would be better is if you just went back and cured it. Now, you may not necessarily make the profit off of it, but in terms of the labor and the cost to get it to the extent that it's supposed to be and look and that she can actually use it, I think the onus is on you to cure it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to rule in the plaintiff's favor in the amount of $2,400. I'm going to stay that judgment for 30 days. If after 30 days you can show that you went back and did it accordingly in a way that objectively anyone would say this was done correctly, well, then she won't get the $2,400. But if 30 days goes by and it's not done, you will have to pay her that amount. That is the order. Case closed. All rise. Judge Ross has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $2,400 if he doesn't fix the driveway within 30 days. I'm happy with the decision of the judge, and I just hope that Mr. Perriman will follow through and give us the driveway that we really want. Well, of course I'm not happy with the ruling, but I'm going to rectify the situation, do the job, finish the driveway, and move on. And coming up on America's Court with Judge Ross. How's Granny doing? She had a tough time last night. It's always tough to talk about. It looks like I'll be able to cover the funeral expenses once the time comes. Closed captioning provided by... This is America's Court with Judge Ross. Monica Westlake claims her aunt promised to reimburse her for the cost of her grandmother's funeral, but she never did. Ms. Westlake is suing Jeanette Reiser in the amount of $9,000. Ms. Reiser claims her inheritance was less than expected, but since Ms. Westlake was also named in the will, Ms. Reiser doesn't think she owes her any money. All rise. Remain standing and come to order. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Kevin Ross presiding. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. All parties have been sworn, Your Honor. There, get up in his office. We have a loved one, and that loved one is now deceased, and we're fighting over what happened as it relates to the will. Yes? Yes, yes Your Honor. Is there any dispute that you said you would pay $9,000 for the burial services in terms of your portion? Your Honor, my mother told me that I was going to get $50,000. Now, talking about that, mm -hmm. did you say to Ms. Westlake, I will pay $9,000 towards the burial of your mother? I did. Okay. The agreement involved you also having to pay a certain amount of money. Yes, Your Honor. And how much were you obligating to pay? I paid the $15,000 up front. Right. How did we get to this, I'll pay nine? I'll pay six. Tell me about that conversation. Okay. Um, Aunt Jeanette, uh, she automatically off the rip said that she was going to assume the majority of the responsibility for the burial since she was expecting to get a greater deal from the will, a, a larger amount of money. And that's what you were saying, that you thought there was going to be this amount of $50,000. Yes, Your Honor. What made you conclude that that was the amount of money that you were looking to inherit? Because my mom told me that that was, I was going to get a large chunk of that money in the will. Okay. And what happened? Because of expenses, I had to move her to an assisted living facility. Mm -hmm. She had uh, eye problems. She had heart problems. So I couldn't take care of her. Her medical bills, what Medicare didn't pay, we had to take it out of her money to pay for the balance of her medical bills. So with that, I ended up not getting what she promised that I was going to get. 
Coming up on America's Court. How's Granny doing? She had a tough time last night. It's always tough to talk about. Looks like I'll be able to cover the funeral expenses once the time comes. Closed captioning provided by. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. America's Court is back with the case of Monica Westlake, who is suing Jeanette Reiser for breach of contract. You were hearing the information about the will. What yes, happened then? You're, you're getting ready to show me something while okay. she's getting ready well, to Well, I have my grandmother's last will and testament here. Okay. And it's breaking down. I'm sorry. Give me everything. Okay, yes. Uh, it's Baylor. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, it breaks down everything that everyone's supposed to get. And I know Aunt Jeanette's saying she was looking for $50,000. The grandma only left us $10,000 each. Your Honor, I, yes, also, I also have it in writing that my mom was going to leave me $50,000. If you'd like to see this letter. I'll sure, I'll take a look at that. What is this message back and forth? Um, that's a text message uh, conversation between Aunt Jeanette and I. Right. Um, just talk, She had texted me to let me know that things weren't looking so good with Granny and that, you know, she was just giving me a heads up. And so I already let You're her. in the dark blue. She's in the light blue. Yes, Your Honor. How's Granny doing? She had a tough time last night. It's always tough to talk about. It looks like I'll be able to cover the funeral expenses once the time comes. Thank you so much. This is you saying thank you so That's much. That's what I thought. She Your knows Honor. you've got it taken care of. Also, once mom's will goes into effect, I'll be able to pay you back. All right. But you're not disputing that you had told her that you would cover 9000 of the fifteen, And you were basing that on you thinking you were going to get $50,000. Yes, Your Honor. Exactly. You had already spent that money. Judge Ross's verdict when America's court returns. You're watching America's Court with Judge Ross. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. You were surprised by the amount that you ultimately got based on what she said you would probably get. Yes, Your Honor. Did any of that amount take into account the lesser amount that she had based on the additional expenses? Because the agreement that you made was to your niece. You said... I will cover 9,000 of the 15. Based on the evidence and the testimony before this court, the gavel is going to come down in favor of the plaintiff. You entered into an agreement. Both of you love this woman. She lived a long life. This is the memory of her existence, the two of you being in court. And I don't know her, but I can't imagine that she would be okay with that. I tried. You're going to pay her the money. You're going to pay the money. It's going to work out. You're going to be fine. I'm sorry about your loss. That is the order. Thank it's you. closed. Judge Ross has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $9,000. Grandma wouldn't have wanted my aunt and I to have to come to court. I'm just glad that the judge was able to see the truth. I'm glad the judge was able to get us past this, and now my niece and I can come together as a family. Follow America's Court on Facebook and Twitter. This has been a production of Entertainment Studios.